Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm really uh, glad and excited that um, I get to talk about this. Uh, the uh, paper uh, that I'll be talking about today is on the Shiv Temple of Girod, uh, which is a small village in a state called Chhattisgarh in India. So uh, a lot of heritage structures in India, especially if they're placed in, you know, uh, the outskirts or in the countryside, they get neglected. And because of that neglect, they face a lot of deterioration, which often results in the loss of local heritage and local culture. So with this uh, study, I'd like to uh, highlight such a local culture. I'd like to uh, kind of preserve this heritage so that, you know, um, this part, uh, this monument is, can be saved for the future. Uh, so I'll be talking in my paper about this temple. I'll give a little bit of uh, geographical and historical context. I'll also be talking about uh, the sculptures and the iconography that is present in the temple, followed by a conditional assessment of the site. And uh, then we'll be discussing how the site is important for uh, the local community and how it is a very active community site. Uh, then we'll be talking about how the site is in dire need of conservation. And I have picked a company, which is the Hira Group of Industries that kind of operates nearby uh, so that it can adopt this monument and work on its conservation in the future. Uh, before I begin, I'd just like to give a very brief introduction of speaking archeologically. Uh, we are an archeological institution, archeological education group that was launched in 2015 by a founder, Shriya Gautam. And we focus on rescue archaeology, we focus on object analysis and kind of highlighting the forgotten heritage structures of India. Uh, I'd like to give a very brief introduction to the area that we are talking about in this paper. Uh, Chhattisgarh is one of the newly formed states of India. So it was formed in the year 2000. It was carved out of a larger state which was called Madhya Pradesh. And this region is very uh, rich in terms of natural resources. So about 44% of the state is covered with forests. There's lots of like iron ore and coal and limestone that is available here. So of course, this region is very heavily industrialized as well. There's lots of uh, steel and power producing uh, industries that work here. Uh, the state is also one of the highest, has uh, one of the highest populations of scheduled tribes in the country. And uh, the time that we are going to be talking about, which uh, in when, uh, when the temple was constructed, is the 18th to 19th century CE. At this time, this site, uh, uh, this region of Chhattisgarh was controlled by the Marathas, which was a dynasty that was uh, ruling sort of the western region of India, southwestern region of India, and they had kind of conquered some parts of Chhattisgarh and they had built this temple that we'll be talking about. Uh, just to give you a geographical context, uh, on the top left, you see the map of India and in yellow, I've highlighted the state of Chhattisgarh, which emerged out of Madhya Pradesh, which is the bigger state here. And there's an enlarged uh, map of Chhattisgarh where Raipur, the capital, is highlighted. Uh, this is the capital city, Raipur. I hope my cursor is visible. Um, this is sort of the outskirts of the city. And here is the temple that we'll be talking about. Uh, now, all of this region is heavily industrialized. There's a lot of factories that operate from here. One of which is Godavari Power and Spark Limited that I'll be talking about in the latter part of my presentation. Uh, you can see here how close this factory is to the site and we'll be talking about this later. Now, uh, coming to the site itself. Uh, this temple is a Maratha style, Nagara style temple that was built again in the 18th, 19th century. We are not exactly sure when. Uh, this is protected under the state government, under the Directorate of Culture and Archaeology. And some conservation work has been done before, but you can see clearly that there is a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, inside is a mandap and a garbhagriya, which you can see in the plan here. And it houses a shivaling, which is one of the most common depictions of the Lord Shiv that you find here in India. Uh, moving on to some specific features of the temple. Here is the southern wall of the temple and you can see how rich it is in terms of iconography. So there is animal figurines. These are leonine figurines called bayans that you can see here on top and here as well. Looking down on the visitor, you have uh, Narsimha who's a depiction of Vishnu uh, who's also uh, depicted here and all, all sides of the temple have a lot of depictions. This is just an example. You can see uh, floral and uh, leaf motifs. And here, if you notice, there's a panel going round 
which has images uh, episodes from the story of Ramayan. So if you are familiar with uh, the epic Ramayan, you can actually see the ten-headed demon Ravan being killed by the Lord Ram. And I'm sorry, it's not a very clear image, but uh, yes, all of these episodes are depicted here. Uh, I'm talking about this because I want to point out how uh, how integrally the, uh, in, uh, this temple was made and how a lot of study can be done on this site. So the next image here is from the mandap of the temple, which shows uh, an image of Krishna, who's a, again an avatar of Vishnu, and about five to six other sculptures inside the mandap like this can be found. And the last image is of the Garbhagriya or the Santam Saktavaram of the temple, where you can see the um, Shivling with uh, his family, so Parvati, Ganesh, and uh, Kartikeya are also visible here. Again, I'd like to highlight uh, the integrate uh, uh, floral motifs that are used here. Uh, now, uh, just a brief mention of how the community is involved with this temple. This temple is, of course, a historical site, but more than that, it is an active community engagement center. Uh, you, in, I don't know if you saw in the last images, but there are fresh flowers that are kept there. So this is uh, the images are worshipped every day. And here you can see people gathered in front of the temple. So they gather here weekly and they sing verses from the Ramayana. So it's a, it's a you know, community activity that happens regularly. Uh, on the top right, you can see a small shrine. So this is a local deity called Thakur Dev. And people uh, come here for, you know, blessings or if they start something new or something bad happens. So this is a very commonly visited shrine um, of Thakur Dev that is also in the temple premises. I've talked about the importance of the temple and uh, how important it is in the community and all of that. Uh, now let's move on to the conditional assessment of the temple. Uh, I've highlighted in small yellow squares uh, the problems with the temple, with the surface that you can see. Um, I'd like to establish here that no chemical assessment was done when I did the conditional assessment of the site. Uh, this is just the physical aspects that are visible. So you can see the brick wall, bricks are visible here. The, temp the walls are kind of caving in. There's lots of cracks and everything that are visible here. There's biodegradation, there's all of that. But most prominently here, you can see how uh, this black soot is kind of ruining the whole surface of the temple. This is kind of deposited on the temple uh, for a long time and now it's ruining uh, the surface completely. And you know, for a long time. Now, why is this happening? Uh, I mentioned before that the whole area is very industrial. So there's lots of industries. So for reference, uh, this is an image I took from the temple itself. So you can see how close the industries are. And uh, all of the soot and all of the smoke that comes out of uh, this, uh, these industries, they're settling directly on the temple. They're not only harming the local community, they're also harming the temple in the long run. Now, some conservation work has been done before, but clearly uh, there's a need for regular conservation at the site. Now, what can be done to uh, you know, protect this monument, to protect this heritage site? Uh, the concept of corporate social responsibility is not entirely a new concept, but I think it's a very useful concept when it comes to sites like this. So co uh, corporate social responsibility or CSR is a concept which aims to hold companies responsible for, you know, fulfilling their duties towards the society. So we recognize that uh, companies exist in a society, they use local resources and natural resources, and uh, what they do, they, they, their operation affects um, the local area, it affects the environment. And so they have an obligation to give back to the community. And what better way to give back than preserving this temple that is such an important part of local culture. So the Companies Act, that is uh, an act passed in 2013 in India, uh, states that every company that has a, a value or net worth of more than rupees five, uh, five crores or 50 million should have a CSR committee and they should be actively participating in CSR initiatives. So uh, the specifics are laid down here. They have to give at least 2% of their average net profits from the last financial three financial years. And here for this um, particular site, the uh, company that I have picked is Hira Group of Industries, which is actually a very prominent company, at least in this region. And they've been working for, you know, in mining and power and steel production for many years. And they have actually been really active uh, in CSR. They have been, you know, uh, taking up beautification projects. They've been doing social drives. And uh, a part of Hira Group of Industries is Godavari Power, the industry that I had highlighted earlier in the map. So it, it lays very close to the site that we are concerned with. 
because this uh, site is so close to the industry, of course, it is also getting affected in one way or, or the other by this company. And so I think uh, the company should take up this, uh, uh, this site as a CSR project because it would not only help the company, it would also help the site in a lot of ways. Now, how can we go about it? Uh, I talked about how uh, some preservation work has been done at the site before. Uh, you can see here in the yellow box, uh, there's some cement reinforcement that has been done in the site. But we know that cement is not very long lasting. So of course, and uh, some chemical conservation work was done before. So these walls were ch chemically cleaned in 2014, according to the reports. But we know that uh, conservation is not something that can be done only one, once. It needs to be done regularly, especially for a site that is so you know, exposed to a lot of harm. So uh, I suggest that uh, Hira Group can work in collaboration with uh, the State Directorate of Culture and Archaeology, which is responsible for the preservation of the site. So they can get uh, the professional aid and advice from the State Directorate, and they can provide their own funds to create a collaborative project that works uh, you know, for this site. So according to company policy, about 80% of the budget that they have annually for the CSR, they have to spend on areas around the uh, industry, right? So uh, Girod is very close to the industry and so it qualifies as one of the regions where this 80% of the budget can be used. So uh, this site can very easily be taken up as a CSR project. What, what things that, that it will do is, uh, for the company, firstly, it will bring a lot of credibility and a lot of support because it is, you know, such a loved uh, community space. Of course, uh, helping, you know, build this temple, helping conserve this temple will uh, kind of gain a lot of credibility for the company itself. Apart from that, for the site, because the site is uh, an, a victim of neglect for a very long time, uh, not, not a lot has been talked about the site and there's not a lot of study that has been done on the site. So I think if a CSR project is taken up by a company that is so you know known at least in this region, uh, this company this site will get so, sort of a spotlight or a highlight. So we'll have uh, you know art historians, we'll have local enthusiasts who can come and visit this site. That would include that would increase a little bit of footfall for the site as well. So for both the site, the people, and the company, this would be a very good project if they take it up. And I really hope that uh, some good can come out of this study and that the site is adopted and conserved in the future. So uh, that is all that I, I wanted to talk about today. Uh, this here is a selected bibliography of the site. And I've also added my email ID uh, to the slide. So if you have any more questions or if you just want to connect, I'd be really happy to get in touch. Thank you.